vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom. You know just what to do.
Hello, it's great to be with you once again and I'm looking forward very much for us being together again on Sunday morning for our service. For today we are continuing with our theme of prayer and of course in our previous two talks we thought about what prayer is and also of the challenge of the light. But prayer can be a difficult topic to think about. Even if we have been Christians for many years, even if we were taught to pray as children, and even if prayer is a central part of our lives. We know that we have an amazing privilege of speaking with and listening to God. But still, to many people, it can feel a strange thing to do. And it can be so tempting, especially as we are, if we are busy or tired or stressed, to push it to one side and to try to battle on by ourselves and without prayer. We have some amazing and very rich examples of other people at prayer that can, we can read about and that maybe can help us. But in one sense, some of them can also be a little overwhelming. John Wesley, the great founder of Methodism, apparently spent two hours each day at prayer and said, God does nothing but in answer to prayer. George Whitfield apparently went to bed at 10 p.m. and got up at 4 a.m. in order to pray. And indeed that is nothing, as I was reading about one order of the Cistercians who rise at 3 a.m. each day in order to pray. And then there was William Wilberforce, who is celebrated as someone who campaigned in Parliament against slavery, who apparently prayed three hours a day. With examples such as this, it is easy for many of us, especially certainly to me, to feel a bit of a failure, but also to wonder at the practicality of it all. How can we pray? And how should we pray when we, have, may have, we might have children all around us demanding attention, we may have a demanding career, or we may have a zero hours contract, when, or when we have a mountain of ironing to get through, food to put on the table, and things that we all have in our lives to organise. Well, one example we do have might be, that might be of benefit is that of Jesus and the way in which he would take time out of each day in order to pray at different times and in different situations. Because actually when we, when we say that so-and-so prayed for two hours each day, it might not necessarily mean that they would get on their knees for literally two hours continuous prayer in the day and that was it but rather it might be that some would pray as they go about their day's work, whilst on the bus, or waiting for the bus, whilst brushing their teeth, or sitting down for a moment to contemplate, and that cumulatively all of this would add up to two hours a day. And so, in what times and places did Jesus pray? Reverend David Watson, who was Vicar of St Michael the Belfry in York, gives a helpful description of some of these occasions in his book Discipleship. So let's have a quick tour of the Gospels and see when Jesus prayed. Well, according to Mark chapter 1 verse 35, it says that in the morning, a great while before day, he rose and went out to a lonely place and there he prayed. In David Watson's book, he says that maybe this was illustrating a typical day in Jesus' life and that each one started with prayer. Is this the case or was it unusual for Jesus to pray consistently each morning or was this unexpected? It's difficult to say because the next verse says, And Simon and those who were with him pursued him, and they found him and said to him, Everyone is searching for you. One would imagine that if he prayed each morning to a set routine, they would have known not to be so desperate to find him. So maybe he was praying for the big tasks of just that particular day. Or maybe he prayed like that every day. We don't know, but it is clear from Mark mentioning this instant that he wanted to emphasise how important praying before the tasks of that particular day were to Jesus. 
And then there were the times when Jesus would pray before making important decisions, such as in Luke chapter 6, verse 12, when it says that before he announced the names of his 12 disciples, he went off to pray. In those days, it says, he went out on the mountain to pray, and all night he continued in prayer to God. I'm sure that many of us, when we have big decisions, do indeed spend time with God, praying through the options and what is to be done, and just taking our time before rushing into things that we may not have thought through properly. Here is an interesting one. How about praying when we are very busy, and even when people are demanding things from us? Well, we may say we can't do that because we are very busy and people are demanding things. But Luke chapter 5, verse 15 and 16, after Jesus had been healing people, it says, But so much more, the report went abroad concerning him, and great multitudes gathered to hear and to be healed of their infirmities. But he withdrew to the wilderness and prayed. It's a difficult one, especially if we have to deal with the demands of a young family. Or maybe, in my case, lots of the computer systems in my place of work have gone down and lots of people are demanding that I look, look into it and fix it straight away. But sometimes, in times of stress, that quick call out to God can be of help. A silly example, but I remember once when I was particularly busy, I was in fact in the middle of a history exam. I was writing my essay, but then I forgot a key fact. A quick prayer to God. Lord, you were there at the time. Please can you remind me what happened? Amen. And I remembered it and carried on. And there are a few more. When concerned for others, as Jesus prayed for Peter, that he might not fail in his faith, when it came to a time that Jesus would face the cross. When we're concerned for others, this is such an important time to pray, as I'm sure we know. And when we are tempted, on the Mount of Olives, just before he was arrested prior to his crucifixion, Jesus himself was tempted to try to avoid the whole thing. He says in Luke chapter 22, verse 40 and 41, pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed. And finally, we can pray as well when we are in pain. And it can be good to pray once again as Jesus did himself whilst on the cross. So many have said that during times of great pain and suffering, one of the key things that sustained them was prayer, of speaking with the God who is still present and still loves them. I mentioned this during one of my YouTube lockdown talks, that even when we were not allowed to have visitors, we could still invite God to be with us and to talk to him. But it is true too in times of physical suffering and times of severe anxiety or distress. We are encouraged to come to God to seek comfort and strength. And so it is good to try to draw some thoughts together from what Jesus did in his times of prayer, and in particular to think about some of the attitudes and approaches that he and also others have shown. Well, once again, David Watson in his book has some thoughts. And so let's just draw out one or two. He has many more, but let's draw out one or two. One of the ideas he talks about is humility. The need to approach God with the awe and wonder of true worship. And also to recognise that there is no point as we pray for others to think that we are trying to twist God's stern arm or that we can persuade him to do things that he does not want to do. But rather it is to share our concerns with him as a child would with a loving parent and to allow him to work through us. 
And another idea is the need for us to pray with what he calls reality, that we can be real before God. We do not need to pretend before God because he knows us and everything about us anyway. He simply wants us to share our lives with him, to trust him and to be open with him. And this might indeed mean sometimes arguing with him or being angry at things we or others are facing. He reminds us of this, the psalmist, he reminds us of the psalmist who prayed in Psalm 13. How long, O Lord, how long wilt thou for, for how long wilt thou forget me for ever? How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day? Really powerful words. And very useful as well if anyone is struggling or having difficulties in their lives. It's okay to say what we really feel to God. David Watson says that the psalmist constantly told God all about his doubts and difficulties, his anger and despair, his confusion, pain and joy. He kept nothing back from God. And he says all masks were off. His prayer was real. Well, there has been a lot packed into all of that, a lot of Bible study. Of course, there will be a, a test later on to see who can remember it all. Now, at the start, we thought of some examples of people from the past who prayed a great deal. But I also want to mention one person from more recent times who was also a fantastic person of prayer. She was a member of my church of Nicholson Square Methodist in Edinburgh, 25 years ago, and she was called Mary Batson. And for several years towards the end of her life, she was very frail and disabled and very rarely left her house. And yet it is said that she devoted herself to prayer in her home and to using the time that she had to pray for other people and for those in need and for the church and for many different situations. And no doubt to spend time in praise and adoration of God as well. And this was the theme of her funeral, her reputation as a person of prayer. I went to her funeral and a very good friend of hers told me that I was amongst the people that she used to pray for, even though in actual fact I never actually met her. It was a very humbling thing to think about. And so that has been a brief look really of some of the times when Jesus in particular used to pray. Basically prayer was at the centre of his life and even though he was the son of God prayer was still vital to him throughout his life and ministry in order to keep him close to God and ensure that he was grounded in the direction that God wanted him to go. And prayer too was and is as we know vital to so many people in keeping them close to God and strengthening their faith especially in difficult times. It is something that is difficult for many of us, but it's something that God promises to help us with if we try and if we put our trust in him. And sometimes I feel it is a little bit like any task that we may have, even big tasks. I'm brilliant at looking at a big task and procrastinating and hoping that it magics, it magics itself uh, away and that the task Will be done without me even having to think about it. But it's just, it's good just sometimes to just go for it, to take on the task, even something that's really good such as praying, and to allow God to work through us. And so let us pray that God would help us in our prayers to be people who would bring our lives and our honesty to him, to allow him to give us the words to say and the time to say them in and so gain greater strength in our service of him and of others. Amen. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we bless and honour your holy name. May your kingdom come, so all people obey your will as it is obeyed in heaven. Provide for us the things you know we need to sustain us. Forgive us our transgressions, as we forgive those who have wronged us. Deliver us from our temptations, and keep us from all harm. For everything is yours, from creation until the ending of time. Amen.